Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest Inside Rovers Away Day preview. Rovers heading to Wigan Athletic in Skybet League One this weekend. Joining me to look ahead to that one, former Wigan striker Joe Dodi, who's joined Rovers this week on a two-year deal, and editor of the Doncaster Free Press, Liam Hoden. Joe, of course, you made your debut on Tuesday night for Rovers in the Papa John's Trophy. I think probably the less said about that game, the better, as we look ahead to this weekend's game yeah. against the old club. How much are you looking forward to that one? Yeah, it should be a very good game. Um, I know the team very well. Uh, I know how they play and um, the way we play as well will be very will be very difficult to play against because we play quite similar to them. Um, so I'm expecting a tough game, but, you know, from yesterday's game, obviously we need to react and, uh, you know, improve on things that we didn't work on very, we didn't do very well yesterday. So, um, it's a perfect game for us to bounce back. Um, they're doing well at the moment, so we can go out there and get a result, which would be brilliant for us. The manager said he was impressed with the shape you came in in. It, that's going to be tested, isn't it, with two games in the in a matter of four days to see how fit you really are. <laughs> yes, um, you know, I look after myself very well, so um, that's uh, something that I take, you know, good pride in that. Um, but, you know... I'll give it all for the team, no matter what, you know. So um, I believe in the things I do in the off season to stay in shape, and it shouldn't be any problem in terms of fitness wise. Come Saturday, um, we need results now. Um, there's no time to, you know, sit there and wait to get fit, or you know. So I'm pretty confident in the shape I'm in, um, and uh, I expect to to go to Hong Long Haul and uh, do my best for the team. Liam, there's no hiding behind the fact that Rovers haven't scored a goal in any game since the opening day of the season. But despite the result against Rotherham, you could see improvements in the way that they attack. Having the man, the man like Joe up there with the, with the physicality and, and Jordi Hiwula running off him, there was a bit more of a threat and more chances created. So although it didn't happen at the other end of the field, Richie Wellens, as he said on Tuesday night, can take positives from that. Certainly can, and I think you were right in saying that it was the most threatening that uh, Rovers side has looked this season. Um, it was just great to see sort of players and, and players that will be first choice players playing in the position that Richie Wellens had intended them to play. So obviously, you've got two, possibly three of the first choice front three playing. Uh, first time this season we've seen anything like that. And then we've got players back in midfield in in, in the kind of lineup in midfield that you want. And uh, again, Tommy Rowe back at left back and. That's a positive sign. There's, obviously, we, we know that there's an awful lot of work to be done uh, and, and starting scoring goals is, is right up there. But that was a significant one, I think. L just looking at the team sheet before the game the other night, how many players were playing in the position they've been intended to play in? And, and that's a huge one. That's only They're only going to improve from there. Of course, the, the likelihood is that Dahlberg and Galbraith will return. Thiago Chacor potentially back into the squad as well. Richie Wellen said before the international break that the season would start after it. I don't think he probably foresaw the, the problems coming at centre-half with no Cameron John or, or Tom Anderson. But what would a result do against Wigan? Because Wigan have spent a lot of money. They're expected to be up there at the end of the season. If Robbers can somehow muster a performance and result against a team like that, it just sends, not shockwaves, but it just reaffirms that they're, they're here to play this season. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think we're probably at the point now where a result against any team uh, is going to be huge. Uh, even even a score draw would be would be a big one, uh, given the problems uh, so far. But particularly, as you say, against a team like that, a team that have really bolstered their squad, uh, caught the eye with quite a few signings in this summer and made a really good start to the season as well, not been beaten since the opening day. It, it would be a huge one. Richie Wellens has talked an awful lot about how important scoring goals and picking up points will be to keep that confidence up, uh, to, to really show faith in, in what he's doing and, and the plans. And we've, we've seen positive signs from that, but yeah, you've got to keep that confidence up to keep it motoring on, keep that steady progress week after week. A result this weekend against that calibre of opposition would be massive. He mentioned that Rovers have simply got to become harder to beat as well and not just succumb to pressure once it comes, which it's going to do in any game, isn't it? This is the first of three away trips for Rovers. The, the latter two at the end of the month are really long ones in Plymouth and Ipswich. But 
you have to be able to sort of sustain that pressure, don't you? And, and sort of soak it in at times and know when to play and when to break the game down. I think that we're, we're fairly disappointed on Tuesday night against Rotherham, how easy it was for Rotherham to, to get down the middle. We know that they're, they're all about, you know, getting the ball out wide, getting plenty of crosses into the box. We saw an awful lot of that as well. But it, it was far too simple for them to get down the middle on quite a few occasions. There weren't enough sort of presence in that middle of the park. And that's got to improve. We saw early on in the season, Rovers were pretty good at that. Getting, what you know, they, they were defending really well. They were getting on the ball and controlling the game in possession really well. Just in these last couple of games, albeit against a very, very tough opposition uh, and a physical one at that that will get right in your faces. It's just been difficult. It's got to come back. It's the basis of, of what Richie Mullins wants to do uh, and we need to see it return as soon as possible. Joe, the Wigan Athletic team that Rovers come up against on Saturday is very different to the one that you were in last season, isn't it? Of course, you and Dan Gardner were both part of that team last season and both potentially in the Rovers squad this weekend. 15 new signings, I think, in total. That, Of course, the takeover that came that saved the club. Of course, they were doing it slightly tough, weren't they, when you went in? And But luckily, they're on the upward curve now. Yeah, of course, um, it was completely different last year. Um, to be fair, last year we had a very, very good squad in terms of players and quality. Um, players have played in some big clubs as well. So um, both squads obviously are different, but, you know, um, it's a new team. Um, so obviously they go find their feet and they started off well. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, we're a very good side as well. And there's some obviously new players in our side and it takes time to get a chemistry going. But from yesterday, there's some positives, obviously, as the manager said, about a link up up front. You know, if we polish a couple of things up, um, we're going to be a very uh, hard team to beat. And um, it's like all experience as well, you know. Um, it's not going to all gel together straight away, but it's something that we can go back to the drawing board and say, look, we need to tighten up here. And um, if we do that really well, with the young team that we have, we should be all right. Of course, I would normally ask if it's a, a benefit to you to know the strength and weaknesses of the players you're coming up against, but the likelihood is it's going to be a completely different backline to the one you would have been playing with last season, isn't it? They've brought some good players in there. What more, of course, from, from Portsmouth slotted into the, the centre of defence. What have you made to the business they've done in general? You look at the top end of the pitch, Wyke, Edwards, Naylor, McLean, all brought in, all players that have played at this level and above throughout the past few years. Yeah, for them, um, obviously not having any players um, at the end of the season, uh, they've recruited well. Uh, they've brought experience with some young players as well. But um, I think um, the team looks good on paper. Um, you know, it's new. Um, but there's not really much, really. For the, Wigan has a style of play, you know. Um, the manager will have his style of play. And um, uh, I don't think that will change much. Maybe it might change because of the personnel. but. I'm sure we'll do some analysis on them to see how different they are to last season. There'll be similarities from last season and um, so far this season, the games they play. So uh, I'm sure we will um, see, you know, some new things about them, some old things about them, and uh, we'll make sure we prepare right for it. Liam, what have you made to the start that Wigan have made? They've already beaten Rotherham and Portsmouth at home, Charlton away. They've got a, they got a draw against Wickham. The only game they've been beaten in is the first game against Sunderland, which you could perhaps forgive them, forgive them for, given the number of new signings that were inter integrated all at once. It's a horrible start to the season on paper in terms of the, the sides that they've had to come up against. But as you say, they've done done really, really well. And again, given the amount of players that come in, we've seen other clubs who have been sort of eyebrow raising in terms of their business like Ipswich. It's been a difficult start for them, probably against a lower calibre of opposition than the one that Wigan uh, have come up against. But um, yeah, it's not it's not always a given that things are going to come together. But I think given all that, you know, the the, the turnaround and, and the number of signings coming in, they'll be very, very happy with, uh, I think, 10 points from, from a possible 15. Not mm. a bad start for any team. Of course, they're a team who've won promotion from this level a, a couple of times over the past five years or so. And They've had some very good players at this level, but of course, as I said to Joe then, they were doing it tough last season. It looked at, at one point like they might be down there for the whole campaign. They, they worked their way out of it in the end. A blank canvas for Liam Richardson to, to start from in the summer. Having a player like Charlie Wyke in there, who we know exactly what he can do after four goals against Rovers last season for Sunderland, it shows their pulling power as a club, doesn't it? 
Yeah, it's a massive turnaround from from last season. It was remarkable, really, that they managed to survive. Um, obviously, with, with Joe playing a part in that. Um, but yeah, you all of a sudden, it's 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 a big name club given what where they've been over the last couple of decades. Uh, but that that spending power has, has has really come to the fore for them as well as following the takeover. So the the they were going to be a big name in the division anyway. They were still a big name in the division last season, but now. They are right up there, as they were that last time that they won promotion from this division. Joe, what can a, a couple more days in training do for you in terms of just getting to know people a bit more? Of course, you, it's easy to forget you only came in on Monday, so it's still that sort of bedding in period, isn't it? You had a game very quickly, but a couple more days of training, can that just help you to get further up to speed? Of course, your fitness levels are already good, but just knowing what people are going to do on the pitch at certain times. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um... To be fair, um, on Monday, on my first day, the coaching staff did really well doing shape and, you know, getting me uh, ready to play, you know, the way Doncaster play, you know. Um, they have a style of play and, to be honest, it suits the way I play as well. So it was quite, I learned it quite quickly. Um, so it's only been two days, so there's still a lot to learn and understand players in terms of, you know, the tendencies and what they like to do. So... The next couple of days will be really good as well because uh, we watched the game back yesterday. Uh, we will learn about ourselves um, better. And um, these two days are crucial really to prepare for Saturday. So um, it's still a bit early, but, you know, in this league, you know, it's Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. So you haven't got time to say, OK, I need time to adapt. You know, you've got to be straight in um, and get points. And obviously, we've not been scoring and uh, we've not had enough points on the board. So... Um, I've got to learn quickly and um, it's something that I'm not finding difficult at the moment but um, the team is good and the way we play is really good we just need to fix a couple of pro uh, problems we have in terms of leaking goals and um, if we tighten up and we believe in what we do I'm very sure we do very well mm. uh, Any striker wants to get off the mark as quickly as possible as well how much would it mean to you and would it mean that tiny bit extra to, to do it this weekend against the club you were playing for at the back end of last season? To be honest with you, I, you know, every goal or, you know, to get off the mark in general, um, it doesn't matter who is against really, as long as we win, you know. For me, the winning is more important to me than uh, scoring because, you know, at the end of the day, we need points on the board. Um, I'm a team player first. As a striker, your first goal is to score goals as much as possible, you know, but the most important thing for us is to win on Saturday, you know, because we need something to kickstart our season. We need to go on a run, um, get up there as well, because uh, we are a team that not usually down there this early in the league. So uh, it'd be good to score, obviously, against them. Um, but as a striker, I go into every game, you know, believing I'm going to score. So um, they, they're no exception to any other team. Liam, just finally then, we've seen Rovers' best performances this season come against the so-called bigger sides in the division. Sheffield Wednesday away from home, Portsmouth at the keep moat. So if Rovers can match those levels of performance this weekend, they won't be far away, will they? Now they have that cutting edge at the top end of the field. Uh, no, they won't. They certainly won't. I think both those uh, performances were heavily down to the control they showed in the middle of the park. You know, the midfield players playing such a, a big part in that. Unfortunately, on both those occasions, not having that cutting edge up front, you know, and, and struggling to create chances as, as much as uh, taking them. So that, as I said, I, I, it felt like a significant step on Tuesday, being able to name the likes of Joe and Jordy, who we were as well in the side. And hopefully now that'll kick on. And But again, I think it all starts in the middle of the park for Rovers.